Do you get overwhelmed when you start a painting and you're staring at that blank canvas? A lot of people do, and I did as, at one time as well, but I've got two really good top tips to help you overcome that feeling when you're beginning a painting. The first is um, to do more than one at a time. When you work in multiples, you are able to pivot and um, you've got so many more options that it, it reduces the preciousness over one painting. So that's my first tip. The second is how you prepare the canvas or the panel or the paper in order for you to start. And this is what I'm going to show you what I do today. So um, I've just had a lot of these um, panels made up for me. I've got about 12 of them. And um, I'm going to prepare them and get them ready for painting. So let's go and get started and I'll show you what I do. So the first thing I do is I seal the wood panel with some gloss medium. This um, I do mainly if I'm going to use collage um, because I just don't want any sort of um, oils or anything that comes through from the wood. I don't know whether they would in this MDF but it's just a safety measure. I don't want the, the anything sort of seeping through over time uh, through the paint. So I seal that with a, a layer of acrylic and um, then I'm ready to go. Now what I usually do is I put a bit of tape over the edges of the of the panels. This just keeps all the paint and this and the marks and things so that the, the edge is nice and clean and at the end when it, the painting's finished I'll paint the edge black and uh, over the top of any paint that's come over the edge and then when the painting's finished I'll peel the tape off and that uh, leaves a really nice clean um, edge uh, side to the panel. And you can get away with not framing them they look so good and tidy. Um, so that's uh, the next step is putting some tape around the edges. With these ones I'm not going to do that though because um, I, am actually, I have got frames for them. So the next step is white gesso and that goes over the top of the gloss medium which is dried um, and that's just a, one layer of that and then when that's dry I put a layer of black gesso over the top. Now what I like to do here is sprinkle a little bit of water onto the top of the paint and then just very lightly drag the colour shaper over the top and where the water is it picks off the paint and then you can just um, smooth the thing over until you get these lovely soft marks and little drops uh, on the surface of the paint. So there's lots of different ways of doing this you can use a lot of water so I'm put in this one I'm putting a little bit of water onto the panel to begin with and then I'll put the black gesso over the top and mix it in with the water so this is um, a little bit wetter and now I can scrape through and I'm using a comb here to make these sorts of marks and uh, it's basically all I'm doing is just really experimenting and playing around and seeing what sort of effects I can get on the surface before I even start painting and uh, this puts me in an experimental frame of mind. I'm not creating a surface to then start um, the second stage of actually doing my painting. I'm starting right from the very beginning with experimenting and this just carries through, through my whole painting process. So there's no point where the surface is now ready to paint. The surface is just being built up with marks and effects right from the very beginning. And so here I'm just experimenting with a bit of um, kitchen paper to see if I can get some sort of pattern, but it didn't lift that much off, so I sort of came over the top of it. But uh, I mean, it did sort of make an imprint into it, which if I left to dry might have um, been interesting. But um, basically what I'm doing is just really experimenting and coming back this one has dried a little bit and now I'm putting a bit more water on and seeing if I can lift some more of that paint off. Dragging over with a squeegee this time instead of the colour shaper 
and seeing what sort of effects that gets. And then putting some more water on and with a, a cloth and sort of disrupting the surface that way. All the time looking to get these lovely marks on the surface of the painting. And now that the surface isn't, you know, it already has some marks on it, I've already started the painting. I've already got some lights and darks, I've got some shapes, and my painting has begun. So it, I haven't really had to face the blank canvas or the blank um, uh, piece of paper or cradle panel and think, now what am I going to do? Because right from the beginning, I'm starting off with creating marks and building up my painting. So this is a great way of um, avoiding that overwhelm that can happen when you're faced with the, with the blank canvas. And I, with this I'm just letting it dry a little bit and then coming back into it where it's wet I'm dragging the comb through it again so I'm building up layers. Now I've let that dry I'm putting some white gesso over the top and now I'm sprinkling a little bit of water over there and I'm doing exactly the same but this time it's white on black and I'm getting these lovely soft whites and greys and uh, this creates a really beautiful soft surface to, to work with and there's some lovely marks that you know that could end up being part of the finished painting so the same thing putting the paint on with the color shaper this time dragging the paint the white paint around and that creates shapes that could suggest a composition so my painting has already begun and I haven't all I'm doing is experimenting this time I'm going to put the paint on with the squeegee see what happens with this And the great thing about working with multiples is that you've got what, if you get an idea for something that works on one, you can try it or fine tune it, change it a bit to make it better on another panel. All your magic doesn't have to happen on one work, it can happen over a series of works. And that makes it easier and takes the pressure off, takes the pressure off your, your one piece that you're working on. Now I'm um, experimenting with these high flow acrylics. This is something new that I've recently just um, bought. So I've got some um, airbrush medium. I've mixed a bit of the pigment into the medium and I'm just sort of glazing over the top. I still want the surface to be quite light but I just want to get some sort of colour in there as well in parts. So I'm just playing around with that with the colour shaper. and different ways of applying the um, the materials. So this time I just squirted it straight onto the board, mixing it on the board, spreading it around. It was quite a cool day that I did this on and I found that the airbrush medium does take quite a long time to dry. So this is coming back into it as it still hasn't dried and bringing in some other colours. So I'm really just trying these out. I haven't used them much before and uh, just trying out, seeing what sort of effects I can get with them. And this is what my painting process is all about really, just trying things out. Asking what if, what if I do this and what if I use this tool and what if I use this colour with that colour. Always experimenting.
So I'm just sort of trying to make the colour a little bit more subtle by putting a brown into it there. And here I'm splashing on a little bit of water and uh, moving that around and moving it with my fingers, the parts that are still wet. You can see on here that the water has sort of, um, the airbrush medium sort of resists with the water, created those little spots. Eventually this did dry but it did take a while. And this is where I left it. And so after this I would come in with um, probably some thicker paint and some more defined shapes and see where I go from there. And I can also add some collage into this as well. But it's already got some interesting marks, interesting shapes and a lovely surface. And I've not had to face a blank canvas and be overwhelmed by what do I do with this stark looking beginning. So it's a great way to get started.